Yeah, no, it's a talented team. It's a talented defense. They've got a really good front. They've got uh, athletic linebackers, and uh, they're playing well in the secondary. So we've got a we've got a huge challenge in front of us Saturday, uh, Sunday, and uh, I know our guys are going to meet the challenge. So they're excited about it. You know, like any young player, um, he's still developing. You know, we do things with him to try to prepare him in case he ever does have to play because being the backup quarterback, you are always one play away. So he puts in the time. Um, he does a great job working with Marcus, helping Marcus in anything that Marcus needs. Um, takes a lot of reps with the guys during practice, after practice to try to prepare. But it's also he's got to emulate the scout, the quarterback of the team we're about to play. So he has that challenge as well. But, uh, you know, we have full, full faith in, in both guys. And, um, you know, I think – Desmond has done a great job trying to prepare himself, and we'll see what goes from there. Since you really haven't seen him in like a really preseason design, you haven't seen him in a real game plan. Um, as one of those scenarios where you don't really know how he's going to react since you haven't seen him in a game Well, you know, you'd like to think you know how it's, how, how it's going to go, but uh, obviously it's football and things are going to happen, and he, there's, there would be things that he hadn't seen, and just, it'd just be a new experience for him, but I, I'm sure he would handle it fine. I wouldn't have any worries. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing about Marcus is he's the same guy every day. So whether he throws for 300 or throws for 150, he's the same guy coming to build. And I think for the quarterback position, that's important because everybody looks at him to kind of to kind of steer the ship. And they see he comes in here, he's the same guy every day, puts in the same work, and uh, I think that's important. And uh, I thought he came out, um, really had command of the offense, had a good first drive. Um, you know, we were able to punch the ball in there. I thought he did a great job with play extension on the touchdown to Drake. So I was happy to see him come back and, and, and rebound. And that's what football is. And, you know, there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be ebbs and flows. And uh, I thought he handled it well. So do you, do you sometimes cringe when you see him take off on a play and, and take, a, take a hit, like when he dove into the end zone? You know, at first you're like, oh, my God. You know, you guys are kind of like, oh. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah, you know, being, being a competitor, I know he's going to do everything he can to help this team win, whether it's trying to get a first down, whether it's scoring a touchdown, whatever it may be. But uh, he knows he needs to protect himself at times, and he's smart about it, and he's been playing a football, uh, you know, a long time. So he understands what he needs to get done. But being a competitor, he's going to do what he has to do to, to get the first down or punch the ball in there. So uh, look forward to continuing to do that. He's often tough on himself uh, when he speaks with us, and his common refrain is that um, he gets in trouble when he tries to put too much on himself. What kind of feed, I know you, you want a guy to, to be confident and not be second guessing himself on the field. What kind of feedback do you give him about those kind of decisions and when to know when it's too much, when he's putting too much on himself? You know, I, I think, you know, it just comes into the flow of the game. Like, you know, Marcus here's at times, you know, obviously he wants to make a play, he wants to make a spark, spark but sometimes you got to be smart with the ball as well and know when the journey's over know when the play's over and play the next play. Maybe it's a bad play and don't make a bad play worse and get us into a manageable situation. Let's go out there and try to attack it, attack it the next play. So you don't ever want to take his, Wade's instinct and his ability and, and his reaction to certain situations. But, but we talk about it, and um, I think he's done a great job of not putting the ball in harm's way and trying to help manage the game for us. You, you, you just said journey's over. Arthur said that. Marcus said that. Is that just kind of a common phrase that you all use? Is that just – yeah, you know, usually when all three guys are saying something, you know, <laughs> well, to it's me, a it's messaging a, thing. No, to me, it's an old football adage. I, yeah. I wasn't a very good football player, but my coach used to tell me, hey, Charles, know when the journey's over. Now, I was only gaining about a yard or two, so <laughs> the journey wasn't a long journey. But uh, I think it's just a football term that's okay. used. But I think you got to be, you know, smart about it, knowing when it's over and knowing when, hey, let's play the next play. Let's, let's get down. Let's get us into third manageable, whatever it may be, and then we'll play the next play from there. Uh, there were, I mean, maybe you were asked about this, so I apologize. Were, in terms of Desmond, where, where is the development at this point? Because, I mean, I think last time you were in here, we talked about how difficult it is to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Where is he right now in that development? Yeah, you know, as we talked about, yeah, we talked about last time, you know, he's got a tough job. Being the backup quarterback is not, a, not an easy thing. You have to know our offense as well as the starter, but you're also emulating the, uh, the, the team we're, we're going to play as quarterback. And he's got to do a good job of balancing that and understanding their offense and what our defense needs to see during practice, but then also being able to execute our offense at a high level if needed because he's only one play away and that's the the situation with any backup quarterback so uh we're pleased with where he's at 
Um, he's going to continue to develop. He's going to continue to grow. We'll continue to work with him, and uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah. Is, is how much harder is that for a rookie? Uh, I think just understanding it, and I think Marcus does a great job of working with him to understand, you know, what it's going to take to be a backup. And, you know, I talk to him, and Coach Ragone talks to him. We just try to educate him on what needs to be done. And obviously, as the season's gotten on, he's gotten more and more comfortable with it. And uh, you've seen growth from there just from him, you know, whatever it's – whether it's mastering the game plan or – or mastering this concept, or understand this progression, you see a little bit more of it each week, which is which is a positive. And if he did have to come in due to injury or whatever, how much of what you guys do could he do? You know, we, we expect every player on the team, whether it's the quarterback, the running back, a, a cornerback, whatever, to execute whatever the scheme is for that week. So, um, you know, we would expect him to come in, and he would have to do whatever he was asked to do. But I'm, I'm going to double down on this. I know you are. <laughs> well, because, I mean – You've seen it over and over again with quarterbacks in the NFL. Sure. Like you have to pull back or, or change often things based off of skill set. So I'm just wondering how much, you know, having never taken a regular season NFL snap, Desmond could really handle if he, it was a situation where he had to go from the game. Right, and, and, and I don't know that my answer would change. Anything that we, that we call game plan wise, anything that's in the game plan, we expect him to be able to execute. And it's the same thing with any other position on this team. And I think that's the one thing that's really good about this team that, I, that I'm really proud of is that it's competition everywhere. And these guys go out there and compete and it's competition every week at, at each position. So at any position, the guys are expected to be able to execute the game plan. And we would expect Desmond to go in there and execute the game plan if he ever had to go in. Well, how much of the game plan would have to be truncated? Uh, whatever part he's asked to execute is what, what he'll do. How confident would you be at that moment that he could do that? He'd be fine. Just like any, any other player had to come in. They're on, everybody's on this roster for a reason. And uh, everybody's got a job to do, and we feel everybody on this team is capable of performing whatever job there is asked to do. And uh, the whole, myself, the coaching staff, we have faith in these guys. You spoke earlier about how he's, he's made progress each week in things, including mastering the game plan. Now, that's different, I, I assume, than learning the, the playbook. And we heard in the, in the preseason and training camp that, that he was a quick learner. But that's not the same as being able to put your team in the right place and, and call the right plays and all that. Where have you seen him grow in, in terms of ma the, the mastery of the game plan? You know, I, I just see growth with him, whether it's conceptually, whether it's formations, or whether it's blitz pickups, whatever it may be. I just see the growth in the work that he puts in each week about trying to get better as a, as a professional quarterback. And, you know, obviously he was asked, you know, there's things that we asked him to do that he wasn't asked to do in college. And I think he's taken the, the growth there. He's taken the steps there. And he continues to develop each day and put in the work. And, um, you know, we'll continue to work with him and see where it goes from there. Wow, that's a good question. Um, you know, you know, I think where, where a lot of time has to go in is play calls. I mean, some, some of the stuff, you know, he, he's got to be on top of it. He's got to know where every position has to do. So if a player comes to him in the huddle and the play's called and needs a reminder about what to do, he's got to be able to tell him what to do and go from there. So I think it's just understanding the full concept and what we're asking him to do and also understanding what everybody else's responsibility is on the offensive side of the ball to be out there because he's the coach on the field. So if there's any questions, any anything out there, the quarterback's got to be the one to answer it. So I think that 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 knowledge and that that wealth of information is, is probably one of the harder things. So I mean it goes before and even in the pre snap stuff and obviously execution, but it's literally when y'all are in the huddle. No doubt. And then it's got to get what what look did the defense present present us? We told we um, think they may give us this look. They gave us another look. Now what's the adjustment? Now where does the ball go? Now where's my progression? And all that needs to be processed in probably 20 to 25 seconds as far as what's my protection? Where do I need to go there? Where does the ball need to go? And I think just continued reps and reps and seeing more and more, obviously, is going to help anybody's growth. Can, can you do that without doing it? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. No, no. I got, you know, I got, I got you what you're saying. saying. Like, I got what you're saying. Well, he doesn't practice. You right. know. So we, we see it there, and we see it from, from, from both our quarterbacks. We see it from Marcus. We see it from Dez. see it from other players. And that's why we go out there and practice, to try to simulate the best that we can in any game-like situation. You spoke about his, his part of his job is to emulate the opposing quarterback. How, what, what kind of percentage of his practice time is, is, is on being Heineke or being Fields instead of being – yeah it's, yeah, yeah, it's a good question. It's a huge part. I mean, because anytime our defense is out there and it's a, it's a live rep or it's seven on seven, he's the one out there. So he's got, he has to have an understanding of what the other team's quarterback's doing. What are his mannerisms? Maybe what's the snap count? Like, where does he like to throw? And he's had to do all these things, but also still master what we're asking him to do from a, from a weekly game plan. So like I've always said, it's a tough job. He's doing a good job of it, and it will continue to grow from there. Is that whether it's Dez or another, any other young quarterback? Can that be a help to them down the road that they have to do that? 
kind of forced to. Yeah, I think so. And, and I think the other thing that helps is a lot of plays are similar. Like, we may run a play that another team runs, and, and it's a similar concept, and he's got to grab, okay, well, we call it this, they may call it that, but we go out, he goes out and he executes that play. So that's, that's his game rep for the week. Now, maybe against our defense, it may be a different look, but that's his game rep. So I do think as that can help the growth of a quarterback. They're seeing a lot of things. They're doing a lot of different schemes. They're trying to make a lot of different throws, and I think down the future, it can do nothing but help. Anything else?